Hello everybody and welcome to another third party Transformers review. This one I've been extremely excited about doing. It is of course the Planet X Quirinus, aka Fall of Cybertron inspired slag. Or as today's generation know him as Slug. It just hasn't got the same ring to it has it? Like with all of the Planet X releases we get this gorgeous box with the detailing on the front goes throughout the side, that's actually the side of uh, Slag isn't that's brilliant, we get the fantastic artwork on the back there, I mean that literally is ripped straight from Fall of Cybertron, that is fantastic. And on the side there we get our basic warnings about uh, not eating your toys. Without further ado, let's crack him open. He comes encased in his plastic prison with an instruction sheet. Uh, two rifles and two swords. Now, I played uh, Fall of Cybertron and it was a fantastic game. It really, really was. Uh, Rise of the Dark Spark? Yeah, not so much. Um, but I can't for the life of me remember the actual names of the guns and swords that these are based on. If anybody does know, please leave a comment in the comment section below because it really does bug me. I don't have it anymore. I don't have the 360 and I just cannot for the life of me remember the name of his weapons. Uh, let's just take a second to... Uh... Let that sink in. He's fantastic, isn't he? Planet X are one of the third party companies that continue to impress me. Release after release, they're just getting better and better and better. I was so excited when I saw the test shots of this guy. And I'm blown away, he is by far the best one they've done so far I think you know even I don't, I don't know I, they've done some really really good figures haven't they and I love my Dinobots but I've kind of my romance with the Planet X figures has really been rekindled especially since we started getting like the minifigures like Ironhide and that from Shapeshift Inc and it's just full of Cybertron oh, love it I already do look at that head sculpt Trying to get the light in the top there. I'm not sure if it's catching. But such gorgeous eye band there. And you've got the piping again coming through these triceratop horns at the back there. Really fantastic. Gorgeous. Take a look down these legs really does break up that grey. You know, I, you may have noticed lately I've been taking a lot more pictures of the toys that I'm really enjoying the photography side at the moment. And I just want to rush through the review and get the pictures for this guy done. He is phenomenal. Absolutely stunning. Let's have a look at the back kibble. Um, I think that's pretty good, isn't it? At the end of the day, that's pretty much what it looks like on the game. Um, I love that. Look at that. It's insane. Gorgeous, gorgeous paint applications. Really robust. It's kind of what we've come to expect from their plastic quality. We've got these grooves in the hands so the swords and the guns can stay in there. I mean, you don't even need the fingers closed around the weapon for them to stay in. It's a really nice touch, but just closing up those fingers really does set this off. I mean, just look at the quality there. It really does look very flame-like on the end. Gorgeous swords. Let's take a look at this gun. Again, nice detailing. That nice red trim on the top there kind of really brings out the gun. I like how the handle is set at the back as well. Really nice guns. It's little touches that make it for me, like the fact they've included an extra peg on the swords, just on the underside here, and a hole just in the thighs so we can mount his swords on him in bot mode so we can just draw them and he can wield his guns. Explicit. Now, not only is Slag the most aesthetically pleasing in my eye, he's also the most articulated for what I can tell as well. Let's just cover his articulation. First of all, the head, which is gorgeous by the way, 
He is on a ball. You've got nice range of motion. Just look at the light. <laughs> uh, the downward motion is good. Upward motion is good. You've got the swivel on that shoulder there, but you've also got a rocker actually inside the shoulder, so you've got a great range there. You can go all the way around. You've got that upper bicep swivel. The bend on the elbow is a single joint, but look at that range. That's fantastic. You do have a swivel on the fist, and we do have the open and close as well. The waist, I thought initially was going to be hindered by this back section, but not really. I mean, there is enough room for some movement in there. Nothing really hits at the back. It does kind of clip the thighs, but again, then we can just move the thighs forward slightly and we don't get any hindrance. The legs and a gorgeous soft ratchet and just look at that for range. I mean, he's a dinosaur for goodness sake. I mean, that's a brilliant range. <laughs> we have a soft ratchet going outwards as well. So that means we're those joints are going to stay nice and tight. We have a rotation at the knee as well as a very nice deep bend at the knee. The knee guards do go up and down. I believe the correct transformation is having them down. I think that's how he was in the game. And ankles. Look at those. Forward and back, forward and back. Pivot. Uh, this section at the back here doesn't actually pivot. That just does go up and down. But, I mean, that's just... We could probably go a little bit wider. I mean, look at that. How many transformers can actually do that? That's fantastic. I reckon we could probably even go just a little bit lower. There we go. I think he's kind of reaching his point there. He's now starting to tip. With those nice tight joints and those balls on the feet, we do get some really dynamic poses out of him. And here they are all together with the rest of the Planet X team in their bot modes. They look outstanding together, don't they? They really have come on leaps and bounds. Don't get me wrong, Galas, Neptune and Summonus are fantastic figures, but uh, I think... I don't know, it's just something about this bot mode. It's so dynamic. And they have really, really captured the essence of Fall of Cybertron. I, I think it is by far the best job they have done. My hat's off to you at Planet X. My hats are off to you. See, with Ironhide leading them to the, like the sea of rust, and I think they look perfect. Just a small safety note, these bits on here are sharp. There's a reason this is aimed at 15 plus. These sections here are sharp, and these sections on the back of the arms as well, they're all fairly sharp. So I know some of you do let your children play with these. Um, please just be careful, just, just a safety note. Now as gorgeous as his bot mode is, he does transform, so let's get him changed up into his dino mode. Our first step, there's a tab just on the top here. Just unplug that tab rotate this head up and I love how the under jaw section tucks down in behind his bot mode head that just rocks up and then you can pull the jaw section back up like so and that pops this joint down that's a great little transformation pull this back section out and then come around to the chest and pull it downwards so let's pull that down and that moves this whole chest section now applying just a little bit of pressure to the head, it just pops out of that tab. We can now rotate that down into the chest. Make sure these shoulder pads are just pushed down. And these chest sections, you're going to want to raise the shoulder up. Like so, and you can see there's two holes in there. When the shoulder is in the downward position, it plugs into this top peg, like so. When we raise the shoulders up, the chest section is now going to slide back in, but that's going to plug into the lower hole. He says, if I hold that in place, and that holds these shoulders right up. You can flip the fists away to flop that inside there, close this section back up, and bring the hoof round. Now, at the moment, at the back of the leg, I don't know if you'll see that, there's a small uh, red tab on the inside here. That's actually tabbed onto the inside of the leg. You want to just slowly lift that off the tab, 
and then we can just pull this leg section outwards like so then bring up and extend out those tail sections flip the heel spur up and then we want to just fold this dino leg out as you fold it out rotate the lower leg and then you bend it on its hinge and then plug that back into the leg like so. This is where it starts to get a little bit fun. Uh, make sure this section here is pulled outwards. You want to grab your tail sections and just push that through the gap between the legs. Bring the leg down and what we're going to do, we're going to rotate the leg around and as you rotate the leg around, if we just come around to this side, make sure that this kneecap section it's kept down on that leg. As it rotates, you can just keep bringing that section down, like so. And that's going to come over, and we just need to line everything up. There we go. Let's just quickly do the same with this side. Make sure that this section is swung through that gap between the legs. Make sure this section here is nice and high. And rotate this leg round. And of course, remember, as we're rotating the leg round, we want to just keep this knee tight as we go round. Leg needs to come down to the bottom. There we go, and bring that leg back round like this. Now these are going to tab in together with a big round circular tab. Holds them in firmly. We can now bring this section down like so. You can then tab the, le the tail sections together. They're tabbed in there, and we can now swing that hinge back. And as we swing this hinge forward, these are going to tab in just make sure as you bring them over they hook just on the lip of that gray section then we slide that in like so and that tabs that in really really firmly the dino head is on that hinge we can now bring that hinge down and then collapse the dino head make sure that the front paws are out and if we come around to this back section at the moment it's just kind of sticking upright we want to just make sure that this tab here this tab here tab into the back of the body. You do have to apply a little bit of force to get those in. There we go, that's in. Finishing touches, just make sure the horns which are on a ball joint are facing upwards and just come to the underside of that frill and flip out the final sections Easier said than done, like so. And there we have him. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that, in my opinion, is probably one of the very best representations of Slag Slug, a Triceratops Transformer that we have ever had. That is stunning. I absolutely love this. I really, really do. I mean, the head itself is actually articulated. It's on a ball joint, so we can go left to right, we've got that upwards motion there, just get it in the position that you see fit. And of course, you can also work it backwards on that ball. You can decide how you want the spine to go so that there's nothing, nothing gets hindered. You know, you can kind of tuck that down in behind the shoulder joints as it turns, you can have it sprayed. You've got these ball jointed tricera horns. So they go up, down, left, right. The mouth is on a hinge underneath there. So we can rotate that in and out. It's it's gorgeous. I absolutely love it. It's such a fun figure. I mean, he he probably looks a little bit too happy. I don't know, um, but oh, I love it. You've got the rotation. You've got swivel in and out. You've got a bend forward and back. You've got the feet that can go forwards. You've got a rotation up there as well, haven't you? You've got all this rotation at the back. The legs can extend and subtract. You've got those pivots on those feet. The tail, unfortunately, is in that fixed position. Uh, I'm happy with that. Uh, you can unpeg it. 
and then you've got some movement there but it looks a lot better in my opinion in that static fixed position I even love the detailing on the front here that you've kind of got this lightning clear see-through blue there I thought at first it was actually a rub sign it looks so similar it's at this point we look at all of the offerings they've given us and we really do feel nothing but pity for the, for the fall of Cybertron, Hasbro, Grimlock. Uh, he looks slightly out of place, doesn't he? I know that uh, Planet X are working on their Grimlock. It's oversized, it's big, it's bulky and if it's anything, anything even remotely as good as Quirinus, then it's going to be outstanding. It really is. They have got better and better and better. I mean, I like Summoners, I like Neptune, Callus is cool, but this guy is in a league of his own. He is sublime. Thanks ever so much to the guys over at Robot Kingdom for getting them out to me so fast. Please click through to the link up at the top here. The information bar will take you through to benscollectibles.com where in the next few days I will have a full gallery available of this guy. If you'd like to buy the toy, then feel free to click through to Robot Kingdom. The link to the toy is in the description there. And any questions, any queries at all, any requests for photos, any comparison shots, please feel free to add a comment in the comments section. If you found the video useful, give it a big thumbs up. Please feel free to subscribe. And until next time, from myself and the truly outstanding Fall of Cybertron-inspired slag, goodbye.